A movie many thought would be impossible to make, however, Park Middle School Productions is bringing Make It in America to the big screen. Thomas Jefferson was elected president in 1801, representing the Democratic Republican Party. He defeated John Adams, a Federalist, and the action doesn't stop here. The main differences between these geniuses were that Jefferson believed in farmers and strict interpretation, while Adams fought for the manufacturers and opted for loose interpretation. After Jefferson was elected, he had to deal with impressment, the act of sealing ships. Whoa. Jefferson wanted to put an end to these actions and stay neutral. Doing so, he stopped trading with all the other countries in the world, also known as the Embargo Act. The British and French grew hurt from not being able to gain goods from the U.S. However, it hurt the U.S. just as much. After the U.S. began to suffer, they turned over to the Non-Intercourse Act. The Non-Intercourse Act was signed the same day that the Embargo Act was repealed. The Non-Intercourse Act allowed the U.S. to trade with France and Britain again. Things started to become prosperous for the U.S. Just two years after Jefferson was elected president in 1803, he purchased the Louisiana Territory from French Empire Napoleon Bonaparte. Because of the purchase, the U.S. expanded land and many new resources were gained. It also only cost $15 million, which was a pretty cheap amount for such a large piece of land. Although the purchase had many positives, it shared some negatives too. To begin, the natives were kicked out of their land by the U.S. There was also money needed to pay the military. Jefferson supported strict interpretation, and if it wasn't in the Constitution, you couldn't do it. However, he decided to override strict interpretation. He got around this by calling the purchase a treaty. But he wasn't done yet, it needed to pass the Congress first. Definitely. Just like the President must check the Congress, the Congress must check the President too. This is called checks and balances. Congress has many parts to it, like the two houses called the House of Representatives and the Senate. A law or bill must be passed through both houses in order to be signed. In the Congress, a law is introduced. In the House of Representatives, it is introduced by being put it into a hopper. In the Senate, they introduce it on the Senate floor. Both bills in either the House of Representatives or Senate are given either H, R, or S, then a number in which the bill is given. After being introduced, it goes to the Standing Committee, where the bill is looked over and studied. Once it is debated on the floor, it is sent to the other house to approve, then to the president. He can either veto or sign it. The house balances the power for all the states.